We're here today with Dr. David Wilms, Director of Critical Care Medicine at Sharp Memorial Hospital in San Diego, and we're talking about ventilator-associated pneumonia. Dr. Wilms, what is ventilator-associated pneumonia? Ventilator-associated pneumonia is a pneumonia or infection of the lower respiratory tract that develops in a patient who's been intubated and mechanically ventilated for 48 to 72 hours. Usually, we're talking about a pneumonia that wasn't present at the time of intubation and mechanical ventilation. So, Dr. Wilms, what is the significance of ventilator-associated pneumonia? Ventilator-associated pneumonia is a common complication in the critical care units and is associated with greatly increased hospital costs, antibiotic usage, and morbidity and mortality for the patient. For example, depending on the study, you might see rates of ventilator-associated pneumonia ranging from 5 to 10 percent up to 30 to 50 percent, wow. uh, depending on the patient population. It's been estimated by some in cost analyses that a case of ventilator-associated pneumonia, on average, may add up to thirty to forty thousand dollars of hospital costs to a patient's stay. And of course, it's a highly morbid and uh, potentially lethal condition with an estimated attributable mortality of around 30% for patients who develop this complication. How do patients get ventilator-associated pneumonia? Well, Steve, we've known for 40 years that patients in the intensive care unit rapidly become colonized in their oropharynx and in their gastric secretions with pathogenic uh, organisms, bacteria. Um, the pathogenesis of ventilator-associated pneumonia uh, involves the microaspiration into the lungs of these contaminated oropharyngeal and gastric secretions. Also, uh, we know that there is the development of a biofilm uh, which is laden with bacteria on the inner and outer surfaces of the endotracheal tube, which may then subsequently uh, travel down into the lung and set up infection. Now, a number of strategies have been developed to decrease the incidence of ventilator-associated pneumonia. Today, we're discussing the use of semi-recumbent positioning. Dr. Wilms, why is that important? Well, Beginning back in the 1990s, studies were done that showed that the migration of gastric secretions into the oral pharynx and down into the lungs of ventilated patients was augmented by being in the supine position and could be largely uh, eliminated by placing the patient at 30 degrees head up. Subsequent to that, several studies have shown a reduction in the incidence of ventilator-associated pneumonia in patients who were maintained in the 30 degrees or greater head of bed elevated position during their mechanical ventilation. For example, in a randomized controlled trial done by Draculovic and others, uh, there was a decrease in the incidence of ventilator-associated pneumonia from 23% in those patients who were maintained supine to 5% in oh. those who were uh, nursed in the head of bed elevated position. Now, elevation of the head of the bed in mechanically ventilated patients to 30 to 45 degrees is part of a bundle of preventive measures being advocated by such organizations as the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, the Surviving Sepsis Campaign, the American Thoracic Society, and the Infectious Diseases Society of America, among others. Are there any other benefits of maintaining the head of bed position at 30 degrees or greater? Yes. In addition to its role in preventing pneumonia, head of bed elevation is known to improve the efficiency of ventilation to the lungs, especially the basilar segments, and to decrease the incidence of atelectasis. Furthermore, in traumatic brain injury patients, elevation of the head of the bed is crucial to minimize rises in intracranial pressure and to optimize cerebral perfusion pressure. Dr. Wilms, are there any regulatory or quality implications? Yes, for example, in the U.S. now, days of elevation of the head of bed to 30 degrees or more in ventilated patients is a recognized quality measure of the Joint Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Organizations. Well, this sounds easy. It should be pretty easy to keep patients in a semi-recumbent position, correct? It should be, but unfortunately, despite the compelling clinical rationale, Several recent studies have demonstrated a fairly low compliance with maintenance of patients in head-of-bed elevation while mechanically ventilated. 
Some of the reasons for this include the frequent need for placing the patient supine for turning or other nursing uh, interventions, and sometimes we simply forget to return the patient to the semi-recumbent position. Dr. Wilms then, what are some of the ways that we can encourage compliance with this very important measure in preventing ventilator-associated pneumonia? Well, among some tips suggested by the Institute for Healthcare Improvement in increasing our compliance with head of bed elevation include such measures as incorporating into our standard admission orders an order to maintain head of bed elevation for ventilated patients, uh, the making of daily ventilator rounds where we have a checklist including head of bed elevation, and educating family members of the patient to remind us when they see the patient is not in a semi-recumbent position and letting them know about the importance of that in preventing ventilator-associated pneumonia. Devices that provide a visual or audible cue to clinical personnel when the head of bed is below desired elevation are proven effective in increasing compliance with this important therapeutic intervention. Dr. Wilms, what are some of the other things that you're doing to prevent ventilator-associated pneumonia? We're observing strict hand-washing protocols for all caregivers who come into the room of a patient on a mechanical ventilator. We ensure that those patients receive uh, vigorous oral hygiene at least every four hours during the day to diminish the risk of colonization with pathogenic organisms and decrease the burden of pathogenic organisms. We ensure that every patient gets assessed every day for the possibility of a spontaneous breathing trial and subsequent extubation as well as encouraging a daily sedation vacation to see if those patients can awaken and be weaned from the ventilator.